So welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to talk about training abroad. Josh recently had a trip to Sweden, as well as, and we could talk about this forever, we're not going to, uh, a year and a half almost of just traveling and training all over the place. Yeah. Um, I have some experience training in other places, so I figured we could trade some stories, and I'd love to hear more about your, because I, I actually haven't heard anything really about uh, the Sweden trip other than the video that I saw uh, that you made with Jesse Enkamp, but yeah. what you want to talk about is your, uh, your training prior to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I lived like as a nomad for most of 2023, which was last year. And during that time I was like just following the IBJJF circuit, um, blah, blah, blah. But as part of that, I had to like find a gym in every location I was at. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I guess we'll get into like some of the common, uh, uh, I guess like ways to find a gym and like what you bring when you show up, all that kind of different stuff, mat fees. Um, but yeah, real quick plug on the, the Jesse video. So Jesse and camp so this was crazy how this happened. So Jesse's like one of the OG martial arts YouTubers. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure anybody who's like into YouTube and into martial arts and especially in, into karate. Cause Jesse's a karate guy, um, has, has, uh, seen or heard of Jesse in his videos. And he recently did these like videos exposing BJJ. It was kind of a tongue in cheek thing. Mm-hmm. But then I, I had this dumb idea to like go dojo storm him to get revenge for so dumb. It's, it's a crazy <laughs> thing. Like literally <laughs> I was like, this sounds like a great idea for a story. And then next thing you know, I'm in Stockholm Dude, like was, at his dojo. It was amazing. It's ridiculous. I'm so impressed. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no, it was cool that like, uh, uh, Jesse was down to do that. Um, it was super cool. Their dojo is super nice. It's like two stories, like, uh, multiple like training areas and everything. His, um, I didn't know if his brother was going to be there until, uh, until I should, until like the day before Oliver and camp, uh, is, um, a professional MMA fighter. He fights for Bellator right now. He also fought in the UFC. I think he did two fights in the UFC, but has done a lot in Bellator. Um, he's an animal. So he was there. I also did another video with him that's coming out in like a couple weeks, but anyway, enough of that. Uh, I trained with Max Lindblad in Sweden. So that was the gym that I trained at. So while I was in Sweden making the video with Jesse, uh, I also linked up with Max Lindblad over at Star Jiu Jitsu. So shout out to Max, who I also did a video with, and that's going to be out after the video with Oliver. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Josh has sold his soul to YouTube. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a very long winded uh, explanation, but um, uh, Max Lindblad is awesome. He, uh, he had a lot of, uh, quite a bit of success at the colored belt level, like winning the major competitions. And he's done, uh, pretty well at Brown and black as well. I don't have like his accolades list off the top of my head, but, um, but he's, he's done, uh, he's done pretty well in the sports jujitsu world. And now he's focusing more on like coaching, mm-hmm. but they got start jujitsu in Stockholm, uh, it's actually a lot, I think it's just like a lot simpler than people think to show up and train somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I, maybe people get like a little overwhelmed or nervous trying to find a gym. And, but what I've noticed, cause I've trained in Japan, like several countries in Europe, I've trained in Brazil, like all over the U S and now also in Canada with, uh, Kabir. Um, but it's almost the same everywhere. As long as it's like a semi reputable gym, you just like, message or email or call and be like hey like i'm gonna drop in can i do that (laughs) like a normal person and then they will typically say yes yeah they'll say yeah and then you'll be like how much does it cost and then they'll either be like well you're just traveling through here so come for free don't worry about it right or you're josh beam bjj's friend right yeah no that's a joke there's a funny story behind that (laughs) it's it's an actual story i'm not just saying that (laughs) Um, I'm curious to know if you found, I, and I, I would imagine you have, but I'm curious to know if you found like at different schools, different styles do, and think back to like the several gyms you've trained at in Europe. Does Europe have a style? Does Canada have a style? Does, I mean, when you go to these other places or or, or when you've been, have you noticed like a distinct difference in the way people 
approach the game? No. No, it's just kind of all over the Dude, place. Dude, it's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, that's what I, like, it, it's so... Um, I, I guess what I'm getting at yeah. is, like, like we could name five gyms off the top of our head right now where yeah. they're like, this is a guard puller gym. Like yeah, most yeah, people yeah. pull guard. This is the way they, they teach. And then like you look at check mat and it's like check mat's going to smash shit out of you. Mm -hmm. That's what they're known for. So I'm just curious, like if over the course of your travels, you've noticed a distinct difference in general approach. <sighs> Not enough, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just... Like, there's probably some standouts of, like, mm -hmm. like the examples that you messaged or, like, where we used to train over at Kyle's. Like, everybody did specific De La Hiva things. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a thing. Um, and there would be, like, techniques. I think there's, like, um, I can't actually remember any of them, but, like, you'll show up at a gym and there might be, like, certain, uh, like, techniques that are taught there that are, that more of the students might be doing, mm -hmm. just like in that, like, Kyo example of yeah. uh, everybody there doing, like, the Daily Heva stuff. Um, but to be honest, no, like, people, people, like, to me, people ask that question a lot, and, like, like, to me, it, it feels like jujitsu is more the same everywhere than it is different, yeah. unless okay. you're going to a Gracie gym. <laughs> Then, then Josh got real beef with the Gracie <laughs> gym right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, I'll admit, I have not trained at a Gracie gym. <laughs> I did do combatives in the army, and um, and that's it. And uh, yeah, so I've only been to sport jujitsu gyms. I'll yeah. I'll clarify that okay. for the for the guys yeah. in the comments. Yeah, I um I I, I my most recent. Uh, my most recent experience with training abroad was in Greece, actually. So my, my wife and I went there for vacation and there is one jujitsu academy in the whole Ionian Sea and it was 15. Such a weird thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of people say it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody's probably said that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be the first time it's ever been said. Uh, anyways, the, the one academy was 10 minutes from where we were staying. And so uh, I had the opportunity to train a couple times uh, it was a blast. It was so fun. I, w I was really apprehensive because of the existential crises that you and I have had over the past several months regarding teaching style, technique, learning styles, all that stuff. Um, and so I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into. Yeah. I, there was no way for me to tell how this class is going to go. To my surprise, we played a lot of games and I loved it. I was so, I was so pumped. Um, there was, you know, we still did the kind of the typical warm up, uh, run around the mats and move around a little bit, just get a sweat. And then immediately jumped into games. I actually couldn't believe what I was seeing, mm -hmm. um, because I feel like it's still very new, uh, that teaching style is still very new and things move very slow in Greece and that's not a diss. It just is the way things are. It's an Island country. I mean, the country itself is not an Island, but there are several hundred islands. Uh, and so they kind of, they just move at a different pace. And um, I just didn't expect such a, I guess what we'll consider like a progressive form of teaching yeah. to have made it all the way there. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was a blast. I loved it. It was super fun. Yeah. That's uh, weird. Or and I actually so progressive to, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> count, not counter what you said, but uh, you said most places you just, <laughs> just email them or message them yeah, or, yeah. or something there's no there's no doing that there's nobody answers <laughs> well that <laughs> so a, that so that's 80 percent of the time right right, right the yeah. the other 20 percent of the time uh somebody answers like an instagram dm uh -huh. yeah. yeah yeah like more <laughs> yeah if you don't never email a gym like nobody's answering right the, yeah. the public, <laughs> like who's answering the e nobody right, like, right i emailed nothing yeah. i went to find the uh schedule online it was like from six years ago yeah. like the schedule had completely yeah. changed but i you know i showed up and i saw their schedule on the door found the time i needed to go okay came in and they were very very welcoming very warm um everybody yeah. there was super super cool yeah um shout out to denny that's uh, everybody on Zach and Thos's name is Denny, more or less. Hell yeah. So nobody will know who I'm talking about, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, great dude, great school. Yeah. Uh, Aspies. Aspies. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, um, I will say, I think the main thing to like look out for when you're going uh, to a gym anywhere is like, uh, it's all like etiquette stuff. So the biggest thing is just making sure that you show up in the right uniform. So one thing that one difference I've noticed from gym to gym, those are the main differences actually is like the rules of being in there. Okay. And, um, like one thing is like some gyms require a rash guard underneath your gi all the time. Mm-hmm. Others don't care. Yep. Um, and that's important to know because if you show up with a rash guard or without a rash guard and they require a rash guard, um, either someone has an extra or you can't train. So yeah, or you're buying one for 70 bucks. Yeah. Um, some gyms I like, I like gyms that offer like a gi rental service. Um, that's really that comes in handy because when you're traveling it's really hard to like wash your own gi mm-hmm. um i had to live with that for like uh, a year it's the biggest pain in the ass is to like yeah wash a gi especially if you're like in a hotel room you have to like hang it off an ironing board and let it like wow. dry on the air conditioner yeah, yeah, yeah um so uniform um the other thing would be like which uh submissions you're allowed to do so yeah. don't be going crazy and doing like yep. heel hooks <laughs> and stuff like uh ask yeah, what talk, you can do yeah. yeah just talk to them yeah um the other thing is like um it's really common in europe for gyms or the ones that i've been to it, it depends on where you're at but some areas are more, will more typically have like a washer and dryer mm-hmm. also so you like uh, you can like rent a uniform and then they'll even like wash it and dry it there and everything and um it's cool but um yeah it's most of those are the main differences i've yeah. noticed and then do you have a favorite place that you've trained outside of san jose um just from like an experience sort of thing i think my favorite place i trained out was carpet diem hero like outside of the country okay which was in in tokyo okay. japan i went there for the asian championship um so that's like outside of the country and then obviously we got to shout out our gym odyssey jiu-jitsu in atlanta yep. um, the facility is huge um so if we're talking like in the states it's mm-hmm. just like a giant open warehouse with a bunch of mat space um super cool place to train and obviously i'm biased because that's yeah the team we compete under but yep. shout out odyssey greg sirico um those are the two like standouts stark jiu-jitsu was awesome in stockholm that i just got cool. back from uh yeah. what about you yeah i mean outside the country probably the coolest one was axis in tokyo yeah that was a blast uh the the guy who owns that school i think he was i can't remember if he was hicks and gracie's first or not only I think he was the, I think he was his first, like, uh, Japanese black belt, mm-hmm. uh, was, the, you know, the guy who owns Axis. Got it. He was a fantastic coach. He was very, very warm, very welcoming, very, very bright, very good jujitsu. Uh, and he helped drain my ear, which was at the time exploding every other day. Uh, and he helped me prepare for a competition that week and just, the guy was awesome. I loved it there. Everybody there was super, super nice and just all rolled super, super tough. So, um, loved Axis. That was fun. Cool. Yeah. Would recommend if you're in Tokyo. Sick. Yeah. You want to cut it here? Yeah. Cool, dude. That was fun. Thanks for sharing that experience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have to do the outro now with no notes. Uh, if you ballin'. like this episode, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok. Uh, if you found this useful, share it with somebody that you know. And otherwise, thanks for the role. Gracias. Uh, how do you say for the role? <laughs> <laughs>